Talmor, Sheshin Mugachi. Talmor is my home. My family have worked the land for generations. My gran says the island does not belong to us, but we belong to the island. And we must be ready for a great evil is coming. And death follows with it. Listen and subscribe to the latest season of Undertow, The Harrowing, a story glass production presented by Realm, available wherever you get your podcasts. Contained herein are the heresies of Radolf Burntwine, erstwhile monk turned traveling medical investigator. Join me as I uncover the blasphemous truth of a plague ridden world that ours is not a loving God, and we are not its favored children. The Heresies of Radolf Burntwine, coming January 2nd, wherever podcasts are available. and welcome back to another episode of Thanks for Coming In. I'm your host, Jillian Clare. Happy 2022. I hope you all had um, a good holiday break with your friends and family if you were able to get a break and if you were able to see friends and family. I know a lot of people um, were stuck at home um, again this year and I know that's rough and uh, sending love to those who, who couldn't be with their loved ones this year. Um, it's rough, but we're here and we've made it to 2022, which is, I gotta say, a a big accomplishment, y'all. We did it. We're in 2022 now. Um, do you guys do resolutions? I do, I do like sort of resolutions. Like I do like, these are the things I want to work on within myself this year These are the things I want to spend more time doing. These are things that I want to cut back on. It's like, for example, I want to spend more time um, focusing on something and and not focusing so much on social media, which is hard for me. I love Twitter. I spend so much time on Twitter. Um, I got to get off that dang dang site. Um, So those are the types of resolutions that I do. But I'd love to know what y'all do, um, and if you made any resolutions for this new year. So pop those in our Instagram inbox and let me know. Anywho, enough of my rambling. Um, Happy New Year again. Today on the show, we have Zarna Garg. She is a fantastic comedian. Uh, You've probably seen her on TikTok. She's out there killing the game. And we have so much fun talking, um, and I hope that I get to see her live and in person soon. So here's my conversation with Zarna. And welcome to the show, Miss Zarna Garg. Hello. Namaste. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I am so excited to talk to you. I love your TikToks. I think you're absolutely hysterical. Um, So I'm so, so excited to have you on the show. I've been talking about it for like weeks. (laughs) You are the best and thank you so much. I love watching, I love listening to your podcast and watching your show too because, you know, the near miss, who doesn't relate to that? Yeah, I know. We all have it. We all have those moments where we're like so close to just, you know, that that thing that we think is going to be the breakout in our career and then it doesn't happen and you're just like, oh, okay, well, I guess I got to just keep going now. Yeah. Some of us have more than one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm there too. Yeah. Um, but tell me a little bit about, you know, your life growing up and everything because you have such a such an interesting history and you've been able to accomplish what so many, you know, dream of doing. So you're a true inspiration for so many people. So tell me a little bit about that. First of all, thank you so much. Uh, I it, The whole journey is quite accidental, to be honest with you. No Indian woman dreams of becoming a stand-up comedian. I can assure you that. We don't even know it's a job. I didn't even know this was a real job that like people would pay money to, you know, it, it never occurred to me or to anybody in my world. And and had my parents been alive, they would have been like, oh my God, we got stuck with the funny one. Like we didn't get the accountant. We didn't get the doctor. We didn't even get the dentist. We got the funny one. 
like that's how far my world is removed from being funny yeah but but i have lived in america for a long time i my children are born and raised here in new york city and they are all american i mean mm. you know they're like you always make people laugh you should become a comedian they just said it as if it was nothing <laughs> and and that's what started this whole journey into comedy um and it's been i mean i didn't think anybody would care what my stories were honestly like who i mean i'm a mom i'm as basic as it gets and i really didn't think anybody would care about me and my mother in law and our everyday shenanigans uh, yeah. but it turns out that they are highly relatable like i found out that they're very relatable things that you know every woman or every person is going through in their own life Yeah. Well, and I think that's that's what separates you and your content and your your style of comedy from so many others is that it it really is you can tell that it's super personal and that it, you know, it's your own experience. And I think there is something to be said too about how, you know, you came into comedy kind of at a later later point than most people. So there's so much there's so much material there. I mean, you have a li- like, you know, a lifetime of material unused. So it's, yeah. it's like you're bringing a fresh you're bringing a fresh voice into the comedy world. I mean, I I the, I don't feel like there's anything fresh about me to be honest with you. <laughs> but but because no one is you know dumb enough to start as late as I am, like I I really <laughs> must be the world's slowest latest bloomer because it never even occurred to me. All my life I made people laugh and I never occurred to me that comedy could be a thing. Uh, wow. but i'm here now and believe me i'm mining every story for what it's worth i mean my kids <laughs> I, i put them to like i believe in child labor just put that out there <laughs> i put my kids know my son got me started on tiktok like i harass him i'm like enough with the homework work on the tiktok oh my god i was going to ask you what started the tiktok and it it's your son my 15 year old son you know oh during God. the pandemic like i had just started comedy and i was just starting to get a little bit of traction and people were starting to enjoy it and then the world shut down mm-hmm. i mean i thought already the odds were stacked against me and then with this big shutdown oh i thought it was over there's no way i'm recovering from this you're like the universe does not want me to do this that is no, a clear or my, sign or my mother in law i mean she's wicked i'll tell you that <laughs> She is wicked and she prays like 20 times a day so I was like oh god she's even got connections <laughs> you know in all the worst of places cuz I don't pray at all so I was like I'm done like I'm doomed oh my and, god and uh, but my son my 15 year old uh, who is a tiktok superstar uh, viewer mm. and not not a creator but uh, he's like a star level viewer of tiktok was said to me mom I'm starting to see comedians Mm. And you know at the time we all thought TikTok was 14 year old girls dancing like I didn't yeah. pay any attention to it I was like whatever you know first of all if my kid is saying something I don't want to hear it that's just <laughs> that's just the baseline but he took some of my jokes and edited them himself and just put them out there wow and and we woke up like I remember we he put the first joke out there within a day we had a million views what And then I thought this must be normal for TikTok. Like I don't know. I don't know the <laughs> platform at all. So I was like this is how it must be. You know, it's like like one of those countries where the currency starts at a million, you know. So I was like oh, it's probably but then the more I saw how intense it's not just that I have the views. It's the intensity of the engagement. It's a thousands of people chiming in from all over the world. One of the first bits of mine that that got traction on TikTok was I've never said I love you mm. uh to my husband and honestly like why would I it's only been 23 years there's a lot of time <laughs> to go but the minute that joke landed the amount of people that came out of the woodworks and said we don't say it either it just snowballed into its own thing wow you know i thought i was the only one and it turns and and then i thought maybe it's just indian people but it's really not mm-hmm. you know it became like a bit of a revelation how r- different reality might be from what hollywood projects as romance oh yeah and how people actually live and somehow i got 
I, I, I'm in the middle of that pop culture discussion. That's a really fascinating discussion to be a part of, too. I was recently talking with my friends about, like, what kind of um, dating personalities we are. And I'm very much so the romanticizer. I'm very much so, like, a product of watching Disney films as a child and thinking that I, you know, this Prince Charming was going to come, you know, at my doorstep and proclaim his love. Um, so I've been working through that as well and trying to figure out my expectations versus reality because like you said so much of what Hollywood puts out of what we see on television and in films is just this like false reality and it's not real it's not how real relationships work and it's not you know just what people experience day to day within their relationships either well I think look it might be real for some people the thing is that it's just not how every relationship works Mm mm-hmm and and it doesn't have to be that's the message like there there are any number of us who don't say i love you at all but we've lived with each other and and we've done far more meaningful things than saying i love you right like i do check my husband's emails for him hmm. i mean is that not love yeah i think so you know i do snoop around in his closets but it's it's own, for his own good <laughs> And it's my way of showing love and there's nothing wrong with it. I, you know, I'm just joking. But, <laughs> but that, that was, by the way, another TikTok that did really well was me saying, like, I like to snoop around. And, and like, literally, like, millions of people from all over, like, we do too. <laughs> You're like, I'm kind of joking, but okay. <laughs> but okay, you know what? All right, maybe there's something here. Uh, I do think that... Uh, Ho- listen hollywood is generally selling a story that needs to fit neatly within a certain time constraint mm-hmm. and needs to finish and start and finish in a certain way life does not work like that no. that's the message and and that's you know that's if you look into the deeper discussions on all my social media pages like people really get into heated debates with each other mm. about how messy it can get and what and i support it i think it's great I think yeah. people have found a world to have air out there and celebrate their quirks right. and whatever makes their relationship quirky. Do you ever get into that conversation? Do you ever like, you know, when there's a battle going on on your page? You know, I I wish I was mature enough to stay out of it every time. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I'll tell you like one joke that that gets me involved. I read like I have a joke about how like it's you know it ends with you're not even a you. It's what chiropractors are not as good as doctors. That's the punchline, and and that joke gets heated. Like people loving their chiropractors all over the comment section. <laughs> And they write things like, we trust a chiropractor with our, tr- with our life. And then I just can't resist. I'm like, really? You do- really? Like, if you're about to have a heart attack, you're going to be like, let me go to my oh chiropractor, my God, chiropractor, chiropractor. Office. <laughs> No. You know, I, no. I, resist, I resist so much to get involved. <laughs> and I don't want to take sides because I want to encourage the debate. But so- some topics will, will like just pull me right in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As a podcast network, our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you. But we also sell merch, and organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system, so wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow grow with Shopify. 
Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash realm. You can shop from anywhere doing pretty much anything. You might shop while working, eating, or even listening to this podcast. And however you shop, we all know and love the thrill of the hunt. But do you also know how to get the thrill of the best deals? Because Rakuten shoppers do. With Rakuten, they get the deals they love with the most savings and cash back. And you can get it too. Start getting cash back at your favorite stores like Sephora, Nike, and even Expedia if you're looking to get some travel in. And getting cash back doesn't mean you have to miss out on sales because those can just be stacked right on top. It's easy to use and based on a simple idea. Stores pay Rakuten for sending them shoppers, and Rakuten shares the money with you as cash back through PayPal or check. Download the free Rakuten app and never miss a deal. Or go to Rakuten.com to start getting the most bang for your buck. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. Um, tell me a little bit about your your shows. You have My American Dream and Sorry Not Sorry. Um, yeah. Please, I'd love to know everything about both of them. <laughs> so the shows, listen, any show that I do is is about the immigrant experience in America. Hmm. It's about the immigrant life of, you know, a traditional immigrant family, what we leave behind and why we come here. The mm-hmm. whole reason I started doing these shows is actually to re- to remind the american audience that we're here for a reason we leave a lot behind i mean the last few years have been very difficult i feel in the american psyche a lot of like we're not good enough the world is laughing at us whatever for any number of reasons political this that and i want to be a voice that reminds people that people like me leave everything behind and come here for a reason that it's great here and we make it work here uh, so the show, every show I do is some version of it. Mm. My uh, my goal is always to have my audience here feel amazing and elated when they leave. To remind them that our differences are not that big. And that, yes, for as much as the world likes to laugh at America, I can give you plenty to laugh at the rest of the world about too. Right. You know, um, <laughs> And that's what, and of course, you know, I pick on my mother-in-law, which is kind of <laughs> the mainstay of a lot of my the running shows. running theme. Yeah. I mean, she's <laughs> such a normal villain. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like if Marvel is trying to write like a n- real villainous story, they need to go after the mother-in-laws uh, all over the world because that there's some real sinister stuff happening. Uh, and you don't even <laughs> need special effects. It's all words. <laughs> uh, but those, that, those are, the foundation of all my shows and I have a new one coming up on February 4th uh, which I'm basically just calling she said what because a lot of what I've realized is that people get surprised by the things that I say Mm. Uh, surprise is one of the emotions that I get regular feedback on so now I'm kind of digging into that space and saying more of the things that most Indian women won't say I'm not a typical Indian woman and I want to own that aspect of me now. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's what separates you from so many other comedians is being able to have this very distinct voice within the the comedy world and really let people know your experience and the immigrant experience, like you said, and the Indian woman's experience um, through comedy, which you we don't have really. I mean, you know why? Because like, I'll explain that to you. Like in America, comedy is very normal. Here you, you know, you get on stage, you trash your president, your, your <laughs> whatever. It's fine. Yeah. It's not so outside this country, right. not so easy. And especially in India or the surrounding nations that are more conservative nation, not easy at all. Like it is shocking to me that I'm the only married Indian woman doing these jokes. Mm. It's shocking to me. If you consider how many Indian women are out there, how many Indian people are out there, you would think there's so many of us. Right. In theory, India is a democracy. 
they should be able to say whatever they want and yet no one is willing to do it and culturally we don't like we may hate each other but we're not going to get on stage and rant about it mhm so you know i think i accidentally found myself on the stage and every stage feels like an intimate setting even though now with social media things get blown into millions and stuff oh yeah but when you're doing a show it feels like you're doing it with your you know few friends right So when I went down this journey I didn't really think about it like I honestly didn't I thought okay 10 people are going to watch this who who even cares what Zarna thinks about anything and then it kind of just grew and grew and now you know the world knows how much I love my mother in law I'm we're being recorded right yeah yeah um, I, I love I love yeah. my mother in law can you just use that as a highlight yes 100% you know I will yeah. I will use that as a highlight um thank you uh yeah I mean I think what you're doing is really special and and being able to, you know, share your your voice is special. Um and I want to talk to you a little bit more about sharing your voice because you recently started writing screenplays as well and you yeah. got the 2019 Austin Film Fest Best Comedy Screenplay Award, which like that is insane. It, it that it's one of like the hardest screenplay festivals to to place at. Um it's incredible. Like what an accomplishment you achieved with that. Thank you. Again, just writing straight from the heart did it. Like honestly, yeah. had I had I had I worked towards that as a goal, I probably would never have reached it. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know Austin Festival was a thing until I finished writing the thing. Because I wanted to I focus on getting the story out from my heart onto a piece of paper, without much, uh, without much. manipulation as to what somebody else might like right so really my focus the whole time i was writing it was on what is the story i want to tell mm. and then once i finished writing it i started looking into but you know i was so naive i really thought if i wrote the story i'll call the ceo of disney and be like now make it i wrote it <laughs> <laughs> can you just make this please thanks <laughs> I really thought that's how movies must get made because you know honestly had I known how hard it is and how difficult the whole journey is yeah I may not have done it I may have been discouraged at right at the outset because the I know now in hindsight how daunting and uh, uh, what the odds are right. of getting something made but had I known back then I would have probably just been like I'm not like go to dental school they're right <laughs> they're right I feel like that's a big advantage for you though too is like n- having that you know going in kind of naive and wide-eyed it definitely it helped you because you didn't have those predispositions of like I'm automatically going to fail I'm automatically not going to be able to do what I want to do yeah I mean definitely ignorance has been bliss in this case and yeah. I'm I'm anyway I'm an entrepreneur I you know I I believe in jumping and building the parachute on the way down as they say in entrepreneurship lingo you know if you want to do something you just have to do it like yeah. no one can even if the odds are stacked against you you might be the one to break through you don't know that until you take that chance so You're, i'm a yeah. big person i i'm a big proponent of encouraging everybody to take every chance i'm like i'm out there people send me sometimes the quirkiest Well, except my kids, just to be clear, they're not going to listen to this. But my kids are not allowed to take any chances. Everybody else, yes. <laughs> they're going to be doctors, right? They're going to be doctors, absolutely. doctors and lawyers and accountants. Yeah. Um. So tell me, speaking of you know taking chances, tell me a uh, a chance that didn't go so well. Because <laughs> uh, on this show, we like to share you know the the bad stories, the funny stories of things that have happened yeah. along the way. So I can share one that's specific to comedy and then maybe one for acting later. Perfect. Uh so AGT, you know, America's Got Talent, yes, invites auditions all the time. Mhm. And for since I pretty much started comedy, I've been either approached by AGT producers or by bookers at club that you would be perfect, you should apply to AGT, blah blah blah. Okay, fine. I looked into what's involved in applying and and I have so I supplied and once I was invited for an audition and what I realized is that the whole taping requirements and how you edit the tape and the the technical aspect of it 
is so important and i just don't know how to do all that stuff mm. as well that i never made it past the audition stage because or in the second time around didn't even make it to the so so here's like forget improving i actually declined in my ability <laughs> How did that happen? I at least got the audition the first time around. I might like, could it be possible that I did more comedy and my comedy got worse? Oh my god. <laughs> But you know yeah. what it is like creating those edited tapes just right with with the lighting and the ang I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I'm a mom trying to survive a pandemic. I'm a business owner running this comedy business trying to get jobs for myself and my fellow comedians. I'm a comedy producer. and i just couldn't do it. i gave up i honestly mm. the amount of back and forth i went through with the agt people no this tape no do it this way no do it this way i was like you know what guys like i'm trying to live i have three yeah. kids like you see me in the clubs you see me everywhere like either at some point yeah either like me and you want me or you don't mm-hmm. so it's i just get i have so much respect for actors for performers who have to work over and over and over and submit that perfect tape but i'll tell you this became an experience in where age really is not on my side like i do mm. have three children i'm running a business like i cannot afford to be taking time off of active performing time when i'm getting paid to make another tape because right. i just can't i have bills i have a kid in college i've got two kids in school and i at some point i gave up i couldn't take it even though i can tell you that every booker who recommended me even the producers themselves we love you we, we you know america needs you and i was like i don't think they need me badly enough like <laughs> i i can't do one more edit i just yeah. can't like you it's and i understand that their system works for them so this is not a dig at them i'm just telling no. you But the mean, ground reality and i'm sure i'm not the only one who's lost a no. job because they couldn't figure out the technical aspects of what exactly these people are looking for yeah i mean i've heard of stories even within the past you know 2 years of zoom auditions where it's like the video stops working and it freezes halfway through the audition and the actor loses the role um yeah. so it, there's so many technical things these days especially now um that are getting in the way of progress within your career but also like you said like the the experience of having to retape something over and over and over it is so daunting even you know as somebody my age doing auditions for you know film and television it's like if i get asked you know 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 times to record something as a self tape and not even like be in you know a zoom or a room with somebody it's like either you like me or you don't like you've you seen my previous yeah. work like it, there's there's a disconnect like telling me to change where the light is a little bit isn't going to make the performance different. So, you either want me or you don't want me. 100%. And and like you said, it, look at the world we're living in now. I have more than 1 hour of comedy chopped up in bits mm-hmm. between my TikTok and my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Like you really don't know what I'm about. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's, you it's know, simple I'm... to go onto your TikTok and see, like, okay, this is, you know, this is her style of comedy. This is what she likes to do. These are and, her you know, narratives. I have so much respect for the performers who do it and do it and persist. But I, I have no shame in accepting that I failed miserably at it. I <laughs> couldn't keep up. I even right now have a request pending from somebody at AGT saying, you know, you should really submit. I was like. I can't keep doing this. Yeah. I don't think you guys realize that I don't have a technical team. I'm one person. Right. You know, so it's something I just I let it go. Well, and I think I think that's a very healthy mentality too because you know, as an artist, as a performer, not everything is for you. Not every yeah. opportunity is right. So maybe this right. is one of those things that's like this isn't right because I'm already on the path for something else. Yeah. And and it is what it is and you know, they they have their system i respect it I, you know i respect that they clearly they know what they're doing they've been doing it for years and years but you know our paths will align when they align i right. i can't force the situation that's for sure so what is next for you i mean you're on this incredible journey right now in comedy where do you want to you know grow where do you want to explore 
I mean, I have a lot of live events happening. I'm going to be in Las Vegas in February. I'm going nice. to be at Kennedy Center in Washington DC in March, which I can't even Oh my fathom, gosh. Nor believe like it's life is just so filled with surprises. Uh big huge thanks to Maz Jobrani, the uh, Iranian American comedian who has invited me to be a feature on a show. Wow. Uh you know, huge, huge gratitude to him that he considers me and my act worthy enough to be a part of his show. Uh, and of course, I'm writing. I have a sitcom that I have written, a sitcom um, pilot that is being shopped around right now. I have a reality series that I pitched, uh, you know, because people seem to enjoy me yelling at my kids. <laughs> okay. I'd watch it. <laughs> yeah. I think I think when they see me yell at my kids they all go to each other and say see we're not the only ones 100% 100% and, and that that seems to be getting a lot of interest so we, I have a you know and of course I'm working towards my one hour comedy special mm-hmm. which I'm hoping to tape in 2022 That's amazing I, it's it's so inspiring um to see your journey and how kind of quickly it's all happened but you know later it wasn't something that you started at like, you know, 17, 18. It was something you started yeah. already with a whole life. Yeah. It's, I um, mean, listen, you use what you can, right? I, yeah. I don't have the advantage of youth, but I do have the experience and I try to use all of it. Yeah. Every story I've ever had with my kid is going to be out there. <laughs> you better believe that. I mean, what's the point of having children if you can't, you know, use them? If you can't exploit them. Yeah. yeah. You have Absolutely. To. Thank you. Thank you for understanding that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zarna, yeah. it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. I really, really appreciate you, you know, spending some time with me and maybe I'll drive out to Vegas to see your show because it sounds I fun. would <laughs> love that. Please do that. I would love to meet you in person. Thank you so much for having me. What an honor. And uh, I look forward to connecting future down, you know, on social media and, and, and in every way possible. Of course. Thank you again so, so much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks again to Zarna for coming on the show and kicking off 2022 uh, in the right way with lots of laughs. So thank you. I'm excited to see her show. Um, I might actually go out to Vegas if it's safe enough to go to Vegas. I might just, you know, drive out there and see her. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to it right now. Please leave some rates and reviews and some love. And uh, follow us on social media if you want to see some uh, clips from the show where we're actually speaking face to face. And we'll be back next week. Happy New Year, y'all. And as always, thanks for coming in. Nowadays, trends and news cycles change faster than we can blink. But there are some things that withstand the test of time. And if you're looking for a connection to something timeless, and maybe also a glimpse of life at a slower pace, I believe everyone can relate to the very human experiences explored in Jane Austen's novels. And that's where I come in. My name is Alison Larkin. I'm a writer, comedian, and narrator and host of The Jane Austen Podcast with Alison Larkin. I spent a lot of my childhood in the part of England where Jane Austen lived and wrote, and now that I live in the States, nothing gives me a sense of homecoming quite like narrating her books. On this show, you'll listen to award-winning narration, I'll give myself a pat on the back for that, as well as conversations with actors, writers and other fascinating people who all share a passionate love for Jane Austen. So please, join me as we embark on a wonderful journey through Jane Austen's work. Be sure to listen and subscribe to The Jane Austen Podcast with Alison Larkin, wherever you get your podcasts.